Hi everyone and welcome. This is a special recording which is not really a tarot reading but it's still a tarot reading dedicated for this very powerful total lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. A moment that can be very significant for very many of us because eclipses are periods when the veil between the worlds is that much thinner and since this is a lunar eclipse it is meant to reveal certain things to complete or perhaps terminate, purge out or release certain things from our lives, especially energies. So at least from a magical and spiritual perspective, the tradition is that under a lunar eclipse, we don't really take action as in manifest and do something or summon entity spirits in order for them to do something for us. But it's a much better idea to use it as a deep contemplation, reflection. And if we choose to do any magical working, well, that is something to bestow wisdom, knowledge, etc. upon us, as in to give us clarity and guidance. So at first, I was not planning to do absolutely anything today, because, you know, it should be a moment of silence. A silence needed for contemplation, for reflection. But then I was really, really inspired to do a guided meditation. But of course, at the moment when basically I got this message, I got this impulse from spirit, while well, I kind of was aware that on one hand, I don't really have the technology, neither the know-how, neither the music and the voice to do like a usual guided meditation where, you know, you enter into a meditative state and then you listen to the guide's voice and as they basically inspire you to go within yourself and explore certain, you know, like aspects, etc. Most of you may know exactly what I'm talking about, you know, as the usual guided meditation. And this is where Spirit said, oh, no problem at all, you don't need either technology or anything. Just do what you're really good at and basically share something very personal that you do, you meaning me in this case, in my personal life. So that kind of meant that I should share the way that I meditate sometimes. You know, I'm a Gemini And I have my moon in my third house. I also have my Chiron there. Which kind of means that my brain can take in the information, you know, shared by the the person who's doing the guided meditation. And I might even find the music delightful and totally soothing. But my soul will not be there. As in the sense that it will really won't take anything in. So it will just turn out to be a mental thingy. So the way I usually do these guided meditations is that I have certain kind of conversations, if this makes sense, with my soul, where I kind of activate the intuitive energies by asking my soul certain very specific or very important questions and allow the answers to just well up from within. And that is like an indirect guided meditation done by us personally, because the question and what we want to become more aware of, or the answers that we are seeking, well, that is the guidance, and what the soul provides either through intuition, inner voice, or basically just speaking to yourself, having a mental conversation with yourself, Well, many times that is so very revelatory that sometimes it's so prophetic even. It's really, really deep and the information is like totally priceless. No book, no external guide, no even astrologer can actually give you the answers, the clarity, the precision, the intimacy of the answers that your soul can All you need to do is basically activate it and create that bridge through playfulness. Well, the sun is in Gemini, so it's part of the eclipse. 
So playfulness should be a big theme here. So basically what I'm suggesting is that you choose your time and way to meditate, but it shouldn't really be like a very silent meditation where you just quiet everything. It should be naturally like a peaceful spot where you have intimacy, you have your time to breathe, and it may also include all the exercises like breath work and maybe yoga, mudras, mantras to prepare yourself. It can also be like sitting down in a quiet spot in nature where no one disturbs you. Naturally, it can also be like a relaxing salt bath or whatever basically puts you in that mood to connect to yourself. For some people, it can even be like exercising a bicycle ride. So whatever connects you to your own being... So choose the spot for this and choose the approximate time or make time for yourself. And of course, provide all the extras that you would like, like the music, incense, anything visual, symbolic, ritualistic, which kind of adds a lot of, you know, extra inspiration to your meditation. For example, like a mirror a very symbolic element, which basically is a reflection. Candles, of course, are part of the deal. They are extremely helpful. And the light of the flame kind of shows the way to spirit or the divine intelligence. So the more physical energies can connect to you as well. For example, like the electromagnetic field of your brain, that is kind of physical as well. But prior to that, it doesn't really matter when, just listen to this reading because through these tarot cards, I might be channeling the most relevant questions or the themes or the topics which have to start that conversation with yourself, with your soul, with your inner voice. So this is basically like an inspiration of the topics or the questions you can start out with and the rest will be between you and your soul. It is basically the answers that you will give to yourself that will blow your mind, literally, under this very powerful energy of the eclipse. And also something that I would like to mention, the eclipse is also a very powerful moment from a rather quantum perspective. Because maybe not at the exact and precise moment of the eclipse. Because for a lot of us, it's not even going to be visible physically in the sky. For a, lo a lot of us, it's just going to be a full moon, a super full moon. Yet still the energy for us personally at one random moment, which might have nothing to do with our mental activities or what we're focusing on, either a day before or a couple of days after the eclipse, we might enter into a timeless state which may just be a fraction of a second and in this, that state, of course, we are going to feel very unusual, like a very powerful deja vu moment, if you know what I mean. But it is in, within that moment when we kind of have a very great influence over the past, over the present and the future when there is no time. And that is the moment when we can change a lot of things. And in the theme of a lunar eclipse, well, we can heal and release something which might have been w more unpleasant than it should have in the past. This is just an example. Or get a very clear image from the future of what we are heading towards, what we are aiming at. And that can be such a powerful motivational energy because it will be almost like having a fraction of a moment where you can actually live that which you're trying to basically manifest or live in your life, that can be one of the most motivational powers ever because, you know, in that fraction of a moment, you're actually living in the perhaps the skin of that person who you are becoming. So that can be so really, really ambitioning, it can dispel your fears, it can, it can do a lot of good things for you. And regarding the present, well, perhaps you, in that fraction of a moment, 
you might see that you're surrounded by so many energies, so many interconnected webs of thought, intention and emotion where it's so kind of visible to you that the universe is conspiring in your favor. It is working on basically making what you need to have in your life real. Okay, so after this very long introduction, let's get into the guidance as in either what you should be asking your soul or the topics that you should focus on when you enter in, into this connection with yourself. And also, this is not a pick a card. You don't have to choose any pile. All three can be valid at the same time. So this first question, this first topic, uh, represented by the Ten of Cups reversed, Five of Cups reversed, and Seven of Coins reversed, may be about your childhood. Now, this Ten of Cups reversed and the Five of Cups reversed represents that you had a lot of traumas in your childhood. There were a lot of moments which could have kind of created a true monster out of you because of the hurt that you received, the pain that you went through. And even though all of this was like a very powerful karmic pattern, which had to serve your greatest good as in to sensitize you, to reveal how empathic you are, to basically align you to almost perfect morality, to feed your human spirit by basically sanctifying you with pain. I think you already know the theory, the idea behind why certain hardships, traumas, really, really bad events happen in the past, especially when we are children. Well, those just prepare us to become healers, you know, like the wounded healer. We have to receive and have and live the wound in order to identify it in other people. And of course, to have the methodology and know-how, coping skills to help other people or at least not do the same. Not give and project that which we were given. But at the same time, you know, sometimes this goes wrong and if a soul, a person especially when they're a child, takes this very personally in a wrong way or there is a lot of shadow energy around them, let's say, and that is like twisting reality. It, this can also very well turn someone into a monster, as in to give back 10 times more than, than they received. Like, for example, serial killer in the making. So this is the kind of karmic pattern where only a really old and powerful soul can turn it into what's meant to be, into power, empowerment, knowledge, wisdom, and pure life experience. But you know, all of these cards are reversed, so this isn't in your present. This is a memory, this is something you dealt with, this is something you already alchemized, you might probably know all the theory, everything that you had to do to basically purge out those traumas, forgiveness, healing, understanding, and of course to rebuild the bridges with the divine, because as a child, a traumatic event like this really, really uh, breaks the bridge, if you know what I mean. But it's not necessarily the trauma or the past which is the essence of these cards, but rather your coping mechanism, which was extremely instinctual. It was basically like your soul, an inner force, an inner unexplainable intelligence just knew what to do inside of you. It was like at those moments when life was at its most painful, for example, the Ten of Cups reversed, conflict in the family, abandonment, a parent abandoned you and you had to face the pain or maybe alcoholism or violence in the family or you had to do chores while other children played or you were poor and other children had great abundance and you had to go to school and this was there was this huge contradiction between you and other children which, you know, hurt like hell, sorry. <laughs> 
And in those very, very difficult moments when basically the reality you were living in as a child was totally against you, that is where a very strong inner power, an inner voice, which you might have perceived as your imagination or fantasy, just welled up, shoot up as a volcano, as a tsunami. It deluged your senses and it kind of convinced you, well, you know, this isn't reality. This isn't your truth. You come from somewhere else. This is just like a really horrible nightmare, a bad daydream. What you are is actually within you. And it kind of led you into a world of fantasy. It kind of turned your senses, your your basically that identity which was in the making because you were still a child. So you weren't complete as a human being in, in that sense. So what I'm trying to say here is that it kind of took that identity in the making into a totally different dimension where you were someone else, where maybe there was a lot of fantasy elements like invisible friends or, for ex- this is just an example, you went out in nature into a garden or maybe to a grandparent and you kind of felt and knew that like trees trees and plants can talk or animals are not really just animals and you know stuff like that and you could basically tune into that so very strongly that that was much more real than real life and thanks to that strong inner power while well, you've made it you didn't lose your sanity you didn't turn into a psychopath Quite the contrary, you might use that very special power even right now as we speak by something that you do in your life like a hobby or maybe you're an artist or your spirituality or that was the very thing that developed your sixth sense. So let's get to the essence of everything, what the cards are trying to tell you with this. Well, they kind of want you to ask your soul, who exactly are you really? Are you like a totally different person or in the very core of your being? And this even includes your mind. Aren't you the same child who went through all of that? Did everything that happened to you in life And this includes even the moments of glory, even the moments of maximum happiness and joy and whatever. Did everything that happened in your life truly transform you? Or deep inside are you still the same child just dreaming your story in existence? And this also suggests that maybe in 2019 or in the last five years, you might have had moments of depression or dark night of the soul. And the main reason for that was you just couldn't accept your limitations. You couldn't accept that you became someone who was playing society's role play game. And, you know, due to that depression or dark night of the soul, that child who you still are, because that is eternal somehow broke out of the shell and it it broke your life. It kind of broke through its strong power, divine power. It just shattered your normality. It shattered your everyday life. It shattered your human life. So you might have had like a divorce due to that or your finances just went into thin, they disappeared or you might have lost your house or something of this nature might have happened and you didn't even know what hit you and in truth it was your inner child awakening because that is who you truly are an inner child yet an ancient one and the very essence of all of that was the inner child saying telling you basically 
Let's re recreate this. It's time for us as a new and that inner child to live your true story. So let's create something better. Let's create something which actually reflects who you truly are. So this new life has to be something that you are more than comfortable living each and every day. And if maybe this blockage, let's say, where you couldn't 100% recover either financially or socially, or you're still very much single and you, you can't even find someone who resonates with you, so it's not them, it's actually you. This is what you should be asking yourself, your soul, if that child who, you, who is your true identity, what pleases that child? What does it want to accomplish? What is it creating? What is it that you should be allowing that child to do in your life? In which way does it want to truly express itself and basically express its divine will? Because you know, the willpower you think you have is just a human, a life form kind of willpower. But that of the child within you, the divine child, well, that is divine will. That is why it, it took a fraction of a second for the inner child to shatter your life, to basically destroy everything, but of course in the best sense possible, to free you from all material human illusionary shackles and illusionary is very questionable because for that inner child for the divine child real life is the illusion and not the other way around and that is exactly why the first question was are you truly that child who you always used to be because how very powerful that child is well your past is a testament to that that is basically proof and concrete evidence that you survived all that trauma and you didn't go insane. And even as a child, you saw the essence of why it was happening. So it was almost like a much greater intelligence than yourself, especially when you were like 10 or even younger, possessed you and just guided you on autopilot. You were like your own psychologist when you were a child and that is, if that's not supernatural and I don't know what is. So if you're still the same being, the same entity, if that is your true identity, well, imagine the power that you still have and basically asking yourself what that child wants, what it is building, how is it manifesting its divine will, well, the answers to that will bring you closer to whatever is happening in your life and especially where your future is taking you because the answers of that child might have absolutely nothing in common with your philosophies, with your spiritual way of thinking, with religion, with what is good, what is not good, what is right and wrong, what is selfish and not, what is ego and not. It is basically a wild, divine energy with an identity so very strong, nothing can touch it, especially in the human realm. So basically, dare to free your mind just for a moment, just in that five minutes or half an hour when you meditate, when you converse with yourself, basically unlearn everything that you learn, disregard any spiritual belief, that you possibly have, even if it's the, of the highest morality, in that moment, there is no such thing as morality. Just allow your child to give you the answers without rules, restrictions, regulations, morality, or whatever, basically, human dimension we bring to the self. Just allow the answers to be as honest as possible, and you will kind of come face to face with what that inner child, with the divine inner child, because you are not like any other person. Of course, all of us have the same basically configuration, but an ancient soul, 
works on a different level. So this is what's different. And what happened to you in the past five years is like a living testimony of what great power that divine essence of yours has. It could destroy everything in a fraction of a moment. And basically the destruction side, the undoing, the breaking of illusions kept on coming and coming in chains. It might have seemed like misfortune, like you were cursed or something. But basically that was returning you to your essence, back to total innocence. And that means that you can create the same way by allowing the creational intent of that divine energy identity from within you to express itself. And the reason why you have to be totally honest and without principles and philosophies and morality or anything like that is because what if it wants to be like a superstar and everything in your human life, in your present reality, let's say, goes against that? What if it just wants to daydream 24-7 for the rest of your life, its life, its earthly life, let's say, and it's just trying to take in, manifest or create whatever the resource is and, you know, rest of the life is riches. So it has to be a good chunk of money or some kind of material well-being which needs to give you the space and time not ever to work and you might consider that like a principle a moral principle lazy or not serving the greater good or going against your soul mission your life mission etc and that will of course block it this is where your human self also has a word to say it also has a great influence it might not be able to stop that divine essence of yours from undoing, but it can very well stop from doing because it's like a contract. If you don't agree, it cannot force you to agree. So basically allow it to express what it wants in total honesty. If it's something extreme, like as I said, never having to work ever one hour for the rest of your life, well, that is your truth and that is what it's going to create. And believe that it can create it because you saw the opposite. The great ease and it was like a ridiculous ease through which it undone everything. So perhaps the truth and the guidance that you're seeking is not something extremely highly spiritual but it's written deep within you. And also, regardless of what that divine spark inside of you manifests, no matter how extreme it might be, or against something of your human morality, well, on one hand, it will definitely serve your human life, your human body and identity as well. So that is something you really don't have to fear. And on the other hand, it is divine, so it will definitely not go against the greater expression of the divine. And yet, on the other hand, still, if you might fear this going against your destiny, well, I do believe that your destiny, or what you thought was your destiny, was already undone, so you're at zero, you're at the full stage, you know, the full and tarot, the immaculate state. So you might not have any destiny. You might be waiting to actually create your new destiny. Like, let me just give you an example. If you're like a highly spiritual person and you might be asking the great divine source and intelligence, what should I do? What is my path? Or let your will be done. Guide me. Do whatever is needed. I surrender. And the great divine intelligence just replies back, but in a way that you may not be able to understand, because it's basically too good to be true, that you're a divine child, you have that power within you, so do whatever you want. As in, you trust the divine, so the divine trusts you back. No limits, no restrictions. Just do whatever you want, because because you're an ancient soul, you're safe, you're 
in a way harmless to the greater good, to the balance of the universe. So basically, maybe the messages that you're getting is just be free, just, you know, do whatever floats your boat and you're misinterpreting all of these. Because, you know, at the end of the day, society and even spirituality in a human terms taught you and all of us at the same time to be diligent, responsible, spirit of duty, etc. But what if the divine that is alive inside of you is so ancient and powerful that is beyond all of this? What if you had like hundreds of lifetimes where you did serve, where you did do a lot of extraordinary things, self-sacrifice or whatever, and now finally it should be your time to just chill, sit back and watch the show of the world and take action whenever you feel like taking action. You are the judge ultimately. But anyway, these are just examples. You will find 100% your own answers. Now going back to the other pile of cards, we have the three of air, the world reversed and the hermit. Now this guidance, this suggestion might be directed to a very specific group of people, those who are highly intellectual and have always felt the need to basically create something like your book. Share your story through like something very intellectual as again, either as a book or maybe an audio series or playing with the symbolism and turning your story, the essence of it into a fantasy story or a fairy tale or something both artistic but based on your lived experience and based on your intelligence and your thought processes and your own basically unique way of channeling your own interpretation of reality. But you know, we have the world reversed. You never found maybe the method or the right shape or form or perhaps the right people, helpers, or the right inspiration, or it can simply be the inner motivation and strength, because writing a book or creating anything of this nature, may it be like a novel, a fantasy story, a movie, a song, whatever kind of self-expression is available to humankind, anything like that is included. So you might either not have found the right shape form, the right inspiration, the right moment, or the strength. So it's basically like a huge work in progress, which might have started ever since childhood. Maybe you had moments in your life, especially when you you were a child, especially at school, where a teacher, or maybe when you were involved in a child's project or something like that, really praised you, And really kind of symbolically highlighted how talented you are, how smart you are, how artistic, inspirational, creative you are. And the other thing is, which might have basically like stopped you in your tracks, is that there are certain parts of your story which you cannot basically share as they are. You need to dress them up or alchemize them or turn it into something symbolic to inspire other people, because basically not every person will have your unique example. So you need to make it be viable for a larger public. So that is why you need to dress it up. You need to alchemize it. You need to basically turn it into a philosophy, something that a bigger group can understand and your own unique example can inspire them. So it's almost like learning a new language or even better, creating a unique language which is specific just for you. And at the same time, this world reverse can also represent that you have already seen, read, or, you know, experienced 
in your life the examples of other people who did the same thing. For example, big authors, uh, authors of like sci-fi books, sci-fi novels, fantasy novels, uh, computer games, but in the sense of their storyline, or like sci-fi movies which were very inspirational, like just for example, Star Wars, Star Trek. And even though whatever, it can even be a cartoon, anime, or whatever this is, you found a lot of inspiration in that, but at the same time, it eclipsed you. It was done with a lot of mastery, whatever the source of inspiration was, because another person did exactly what you wanted to do all along. That inspiration was also a negative inspiration in the sense that the mastery, the choice of words or, you know, whatever this is, how the author expressed themselves kind of gave you the impression, sorry, that, well, you could never become this masterful or your own experiences, visions, philosophies, fantasies, playfulness, inner alchemy is never going to be a match to the greatness of that person or the product itself or the story, etc. So what these cards suggest is take a journey, the hermit, again, once again, deep within yourself, especially into your creative center, like perhaps visualize the activation of your solar plexus or for some people, the, the crown chakra, or for others, rather, the third eye. So energize that energetic center, so fill it with a lot of energy. Through your own unique methods, whatever you practice, it doesn't really matter. And ask your soul, with total honesty, what is blocking you right now, not who you used to be, not as a child, Not as your journey through life, because what blocked you then is kind of obvious. You did need the experience and you also needed to basically live life and see a lot of unusual, fantastic things, unexpected twists and turns of events of life, or maybe see the supernatural with your eyes or certain confirmation of fate or karma, whatever. You needed this experience to make you grow, to make you write your story or self-expression or creativity, whatever it is, with much greater elements to it. As in not to be fantasy, but to be built on sheer fact, something that you lived personally. For example, if it's something sci-fi, then it's no longer sci-fi because maybe you had a UFO encounter. Maybe you saw something physically with your eyes. Maybe you met in your lifetime someone who had an encounter of the fourth kind, if if that's how they say it. So you had a lot of new material to integrate in your life, but you have to ask yourself, what exactly is blocking you right now? Why are you not starting or at least initializing that which you want to share with the world? And don't forget, when you give this very special power to your soul, a soul, everyone's soul is timeless, so it can also evoke elements from the future. So sometimes the answers are, well, I'm waiting for this and this to happen because I need it. For example... But it can be totally different, for example, like, well, the reason I'm blocked is because I'm trying my hardest to reject the inspiration I once received, for example, that movie, that anime, that book that you read, that very special and favorite author of yours which inspired you. Maybe your soul is rejecting that, purging that out, that author's influence in order to basically make your authenticity and creative powers grow and reach a certain kind of gravity so that you can express yourself. But these are just examples. Who knows what the answer might be? 
and usually moments of total honesty with your soul, so with your infinitely intelligent and divine inner being, can bring a lot of revelation. Like, for example, maybe it will say there is no blockage anymore. It's just a matter of when you, as in the integrity of your being, will take action. But at the same time, it can also very well be that you need like a third element, like maybe a partner, someone who will make your unique way of self-expression even more unique. Or it can also be, for example, maybe you are on a soul level choosing the options and you cannot decide yet what is perfect for you. And that might have nothing to do with anything, not even your soul, not even your mind, not even the moment in your life. It is basically a matter of alignment and resonance when someone will res something, sorry, will resonate very deeply. That will be the moment of Eureka. That will be the moment when it will start. But naturally, this is just the key question. You might have so many other questions which you will ask your soul after this. Maybe you might even divert off this topic at all. But this is something that can start a very honest and very healing and empowering conversation with your soul. Because, you know, this hermit also represents that your inner light is extremely strong and also your awareness. So a conversation with yourself is extremely relevant for who you are. Now, the last cards are a little bit deep. So I'm not even sure if your soul you know, on its own, can actually provide you with these answers, but at least it can provide you with a really strong connection with yourself, so it will make you feel that you're really not alone in this, your soul is right there with you, helping you, supporting you, empowering you, and this kind of question is much more about what's going on right now with the world, and the future that all of us are stepping into. You see this sage as the hermit. Then we have the four of water. Four of cups. Deep, deep contemplation. And finally we have thought. So basically you're trying to figure stuff out. Not just from a spiritual perspective. But also, you know, rationally. Because that is part of the future. You know, Age of Aquarius is very rational. It's not just, you know good, strong, solid, spiritual or religious beliefs and bye-bye. It is also extremely rational. A plus B has to equal something. So this sage, the hermit, definitely represents you seeking the truth. You are seeking the truth from within, but also, you know, anywhere where your mind and your senses, including your empathic senses, telepathic senses, the sixth sense, the third eye, what everything included, you know, almost like an octopus who has a lot of tentacles expanding in different directions, trying to grip something, trying to navigate basically. So you're really, really burning a lot of energy to find answers to Find where you are, so it's also like an inner GPS. Where am I? Where am I going towards? Am I on the right path? And this is right path isn't really about the morality, or it's not even if it's divinely guided or not. You might know that you're kind of on the right path, but the rightness or the righteousness of the path is totally invisible. You don't know what the right is. So you're asking yourself, the universe, the divine, well, what is so right about this path that I'm on? Where is it leading me to? Because, you know, this four of water, deep, deep contemplation. And what you're learning each second of the day is that basically everything is an illusion. Everything is subjective. Nothing is truly real. There is no reality. 
So from a certain perspective, that is freeing you. You never felt this free in your life. But it's also with each step, you're feeling that much lost because the sense of direction is already almost incomprehensible. You know that a divine force is pulling you, pushing you, guiding you, steering you, but you don't see the path, you don't see where, you cannot make sense of it, so it's really built on trust more than anything. And you do get a lot of guidance, don't get me wrong, Four of Cups. That is also divine guidance, signs, numbers, symbolic nameplates, songs that randomly pop up. Or, you know, this is where you test that, can I truly control reality if it's an illusion? And you can. You, you like, manifest a lot of elements of control where you say, I want this to be in a specific way. If, you know, my power is real, then it will manifest, and it does. Yes, these are small things, but evidence, how much evidence can you ask for? And despite all of this, Nothing makes sense. Nothing is, like, processable. So this is where you don't know what to do in your future. You might be someone who is very future-oriented. You know, someone who has, who has future goals and ambitions. And when you do have, you really quickly, like an ant, like a termite, build on it. And you build on it very quickly. And you have a lot of passion to fuel you. You have a lot of ambition and willpower. But you have to know what you're doing. And this is where you might be in a state where you have no idea. You are building something and you are definitely guided towards something. But what that is, not that it's not being revealed. It is almost like incomprehensible. But at the same time, you know... This might not be the biggest thing that bothers you. You're very adaptable. So basically, even when you're totally lost, you're never really lost. Because you have this strong trust of yourself and your own ability to connect to the divine. And of course, your senses, which never really stirred you wrong. But what your role is for the future... What your purpose might be in the future, or better said, you kind of feel like, and all your signs, Four of Cups, are showing you that you will belong to either a group or like a family of people, a soul tribe, if that exists. But who they are or how can you connect to them is really almost unfathomable by you. Because basically the present moment reality, not just that it doesn't support it, it is that the future that you logically figure out, as in you logically anticipate, is not a good future, globally speaking. So perhaps this is why it just doesn't make sense and it, it just goes against all logic and rationality. So basically the thought reflects that even your thoughts stop when they reach a certain logical point. Because not even the pessimistic, the most down-to-earth version makes sense whatsoever. So it's like a full stop of logic. Optimism, pessimism, realism, nothing that you can think of makes any sense and this very much so even totally outside of spirituality. So that is why the guidance is to use the mirror principle as in, you know, all the signs that you have been given, the numbers and, you know, every kind of synchronicity and everything that basically was shown to you when you tested the illusionary nature of reality. Now you can imagine that all the positive, encouraging as an emotionally charged in a positive way signs were meant to encourage you. They were like soul food basically. So the universe was keeping you on your path and it, it was feeding you with inspiration, with inner fire, etc. Especially when you cannot see the path, 
well, something has to keep you on it, has to keep you motivated. So it does have to reveal certain things to you. And everything that it revealed to you very personally, well, it came true. So this is how it builds the trust with you. But rather ask yourself the essence and the meaning of all the negative guidance that you received. Perhaps the greater truth and which will help your mind, your logic, your rationality, at least get a glimpse or a picture of where you're heading towards. Well, it has to do with all the negative guidance in the sense that, yes, you had all this encouragement and signs, etc., that you're on the right path, you know, all of this, but at the same time you had certain very clear guidance, what not to do, where not to get involved in, who or what or what kind of nuance isn't you. It is also your rejections, your repulsions, and certain fears. And when I say fear, it is not the classical fear. It is almost like when your instincts tells you, stop, not go there, not do this. This will 1 trillion percent not end up in a good way if you choose this. So basically ask your soul about your rejections and about the negative guidance. Why is that not for you? Why is everything that you were guided not to do or to stop or you know what I'm saying? Why is that not part of your story? Why is all of that harmful to you? If reality is just an illusion, that is also illusion, obviously. But why is that the wrong or the hurtful or the defeating illusion, if that kind of makes sense? And when you ask your soul with total honesty to make sense of the negative stuff, everything that you were guided to stop, not do, or everything that your instincts basically reject, and you feel a deep repulsion, or without any thought or rationality, you just know that certain things are deceptions and lies, without any even need to think about, you just know. So kind of analyze those, ask your soul why those are relevant in your case, why that strong repulsion exists within you, or all those moments when the divine guided you against something like for for example a career a job or getting involved in a project or being part of a layer of society or certain people what would that prevent you from experiencing and living in the future and when you get these answers of what potentially harm or wrong that would do in your life or how that would divert you from your purpose, from your soul mission, of exactly the role that you have to play in the future or what group of people you have to belong to in the future, that will already give an ease and a comfort to your thoughts and your rationality. Because sometimes we get to the truth by excluding all the bad possibilities all the wrong answers, everything that just clearly doesn't resonate. And even if your role or where you ever have to belong to does not exist yet, maybe it is something that has to be yet created in the future and perhaps not the long distance future as in 20 years. Maybe it is just something, a creational process in the making right now. Well, if that is the case, it is very logical for you not to see the future, not to know the future, feeling a little bit lost because if something doesn't exist yet and its existence is, you know, not set in stone really, so it's not really guaranteed. Well, in this case, you feeling a little bit lost and not seeing the obvious, well, that makes a lot of sense because in a way... There is nothing to see, but from the other perspective, only the divine can see that which for everyone else is invisible. So asking your soul 
to detail a little bit more about the, those negative guidances, at least everything that could be possible can be highlighted and be taken to, into consideration and your mind and your logical thought processes can at least work with those. So at least you will have a greater sense of direction. And naturally, who knows what the second question is? Who knows where this conversation with your soul is going to be taking you next? Perhaps it will immediately connect you to the greater divine source. And that is where through this conversation, you will get much clearer and much stronger answers. So thank you so much for listening. This concludes today's very unusual, you know, my improvised guided meditation. I do hope that you enjoy it and I do hope that you will actually find this very useful because this really works for me and it helped me and it even saved me so many times in my life. So thank you again. If you'd like to support my channel, you can find the PayPal link in the description below. With this being said, I wish everyone a blessed and extremely powerful eclipse. Until next time, bye for now.